to my channel if you're tuning in on YouTube. If you are listening for the first time on Spotify, welcome to my podcast. Um, hopefully this podcast will be up on other channels too, but Spotify is the one that I'm the most familiar with. I already have a podcast up on um, Spotify, so I, I also am on the platform all the time. Um, but yeah, for those of you who know me, you know I've been on YouTube for a really long time and I've done a lot of different things with this channel. And I'm doing something new. I'm switching it up again. I'm doing something different. Um, so I've done everything from vlogs, from yoga videos, from sustainability videos, to, I don't know, just about everything in the past four or five years that I've had my YouTube channel. And I've decided to pivot away from that um, just to kind of stay with what my hobbies are and what I'm interested in. So... Yeah, I have decided to make this a podcast um, available on audio podcasting platforms, but also make it a YouTube channel so that, you know, my current audience on YouTube continue can continue uh, to <laughs> engage with me um, and also hopefully like learn something new, something that has been really exciting for me during, you know, this whole pandemic that has lasted a year plus um, has been reading. Books have always been a refuge for me, and it's something that I find myself coming back to a lot, back to. I don't have an accent like that. That's not my accent. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I find myself coming back to books a lot, and I'm really drawn to self-help books. And so I am looking to do, not looking to do, I'm doing it, um, a YouTube channel based off of reading with you guys, self-help books, and then just kind of talking about it conversation. I want people to comment in the comments what they're thinking about what it is we're reading. Um, these are going to be relatively short episodes, like 25 to 30 minute episodes, where I just read excerpts from a book and then we just kind of talk about it. Um, but I'm reading a ton of books right now. I would show you the book corner that I have in my room, but it's actually insane. And my whole room looks like it just blew up in order to make this podcast and YouTube video. So I'm not going to do that, but um, I'm just going to tell you, I'm reading a lot of really great books that have been super inspiring and very awakening to me um, as I'm someone who I do consider myself spiritual. Um, and I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about all things growth and just everything. So if you're tuning in on Spotify or a podcasting platform, welcome to the Readology podcast. Um, no particular reason behind the name other than the fact that I love to learn new things and new facts. And I love the study of things. Um, so I thought, you know, why not explore how reading... Um, did the light in here just change? Um but I just thought it'd be cool. I just thought it'd be cool to explore how the books that we're reading can change our mindsets and our perceptions about life and who we are as people. Um, so I'm really excited. I don't want to, you know, keep blabbering on about the intro because I'm going to make a separate intro for the podcast anyway. Um, but that's basically why I decided to start this podcast and what I'm doing here today. And for those of you who are watching me on YouTube, I just have to tell you that I am in the process of trying um the eye lux magnetic eyelashes so if you see i'm just going to draw attention to it if you see this eyelash start to come off <laughs> please just have some grace just like be kind in the comments um i'm just trying it for you know a couple weeks i'm realizing i have to touch up these eyelashes five times a day so if anyone has any better recommendations please put them in the comment section down below and at this time please like comment subscribe to this video to my channel um and yeah and help spread the word about me changing my youtube brand for like the 11 millionth time um but eighth time's the charm am i right so anyways let's go ahead and get started in today's video um we're going to be reading the book 100 essays that will change the way you think and the author of this book is brianna weist i think i said west before but weist um with an i and I'll put this in my thumbnail so that you guys can clearly see what the book is called. But this book has been so amazing. I started reading it at the beginning of this week and I 100% recommend it. 
it's just 101 random things about the human psyche and psychology that I think are really great things to know. Um, So I thought it would be cool for me to just pick a chapter and you can kind of see that I've been like underlining and just like writing in the margins, which I barely ever do. I hate to do that to books, but I'm showing you guys all the sections that I've not underlined. (laughs) I have underlined a lot in this book. Um, And so I thought it would be cool to just pick a chapter that I really loved and to just kind of read with you guys for a little while. And I don't know if you're on your way to work, if you're doing a workout, maybe this is a great opportunity for you to just like do something while you're listening to this. You don't have to look at my face the whole time. That's totally fine. Um, And yeah, and then please comment down below if you decide to get the book, if you're inspired to get the book. Um, If you have any book recommendations, like I said, I have a ton that I need to work through, but I'm always looking to read more books. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the book. So I'm going to start from chapter 10. And this chapter is called Breaking Your Upper Limit and How People Hold Themselves Back from Real Happiness. So I read this chapter yesterday and it was super eye-opening. So um, I wanted to read it again. And like I said, I don't want these episodes to be very long. So let's just read for like 10 or 15 minutes and then we can talk about it. Okay. Breaking Your Upper Limit and How People Hold Themselves Back from Real Happiness. Most people don't want to be happy, which is why they aren't. They just don't realize this is the case. People are programmed to chase their foremost desire at almost any cost. Imagine the adrenaline-fueled superhuman powers people develop in life-or-death emergencies. It's just a matter of what that foremost desire is. Often enough, it's comfort or familiarity. There are many reasons people thwart the feeling of happiness, but a lot of them have to do with assuming it means giving up on achieving more. I actually underlined that because I think that sometimes... Nobody wants to believe happiness is a choice because that puts responsibility in their hands. It's the same reason people self-pity, to delay action, to make an outcry to the universe, as though the more they state how bad things are, the more likely it is that someone else will change them. Happiness is not a rush of positive emotion elicited by random events that affirm the way you think something should go. Not sustainable happiness, anyway. The real stuff is the product of an intentional, mindful, daily practice, and it begins with choosing to commit to it. I'm not going to harp on this for too long, but I just want to say, so that's the first page of the chapter, and I highlighted the section that said, there are many reasons people thwart the feeling of happiness, but a lot of them have to do with assuming it means giving up on achieving more. I think that this is a belief that I unconsciously hold, that I'm now, after reading this, I'm trying to break. Because as someone who believes in law of attraction and manifestation, I think that when you think certain things and those become the rules and the constructs that you live your life by, you breathe life into them. And in realizing I don't want to believe that me being happy means I'm actually settling for less, like that doesn't make any sense, you know? In in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't make any sense that like if you're happy, you're going to be unhappy with the happiness that you have. You know, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm really trying to dismantle that, but I'm not going to harp on that for too long. So anyways, let's keep reading because I feel like it gets better. Everybody has a happiness tolerance, an upper limit, as Gay Hendricks coins it, as Gay Hendricks coins it, (laughs) it is the capacity for which we allow ourselves to feel good. Other psychologists call it the baseline, the amount of happiness we naturally feel and eventually revert back to even if certain events or circumstances shift us temporarily. The reason we don't allow those shifts to become baselines is because of the upper limit. As soon as our circumstances extend beyond the amount of happiness we're accustomed to and feeling comfortable, we unconsciously begin to self-sabotage. Definitely want to speak on that, but I'm going to finish the page first. We are programmed to seek what we've known. So even though we think we're after happiness, we're actually trying to find whatever we're most accustomed to. And we project that on whatever actually exists over and over again. These are just a few of many psychological impediments that hold us back from the emotional lives we claim to want. Here are a few others. Everybody has a limited tolerance for feeling good. When things go beyond that limit, we sabotage ourselves so we can return to our comfort zones. The tired cliche of stepping outside them serves a crucial purpose. It makes people comfortable with discomfort, which is the gateway to expanding their tolerance for happiness. And before I move on to the second point, I'm just paranoid that my camera is like off secretly. 
but it's not. We're good. Okay, guys, everything's going well. Okay, so um, actually, yeah, before I get into number two, let's just go back to number one. I, I, I highlighted this. I highlighted this too. As soon as our circumstances extend beyond the amount of happiness we're accustomed to and comfortable feeling, we unconsciously begin to self-sabotage. Let me tell you just a personal anecdote of how real that is. I, during the pandemic, had to move back from Spain in the middle of this craziness and came home and finished my program teaching remotely and did not have a job or any clue what I wanted to do. I was less than a year out of college and I just felt like my whole self-identity was being dismantled. So, you know, in the midst of that, I was finding all these things to keep me busy And then I finally got a job as a communications assistant um, at a grocery store chain that I, you know, really like shopping at because it's all organic. And, you know, of course, I'm just branding myself right now, but it's all organic and I would get a 30% discount by working there. So also at the time, I had literally applied for, I kid you not, like 50 plus jobs and had six successful interviews where I made it to the final round and then did not get the job. Um, after like lots of projects and things that I had to submit, but I digress. Um, so basically I had this job and I was working there from November, no, October of 2020 up until end of February of 2021. Um, so pretty recently. And I did not like this job. I worked with a group of women that I just, I know, you know, it kind of sucks to have this very paranoid mindset sometimes about people, but I just felt like they did not have my best interest in mind. I felt like there was a lot of jealousy for my skill set and like my resume and the things that I had accomplished. I felt like there was just always this like pushback on all of my work and they wanted to like keep me down here, even though I had so much more that I wanted to contribute to the team. So anyways, I went through this whole, like, I don't know, I won't call it like a spiritual awakening. It was kind of like a soft spiritual awakening, but I was like, I'm going to manifest my way out of this. So I'm just going to fast forward. But basically I manifested a new job where I applied for it on a Thursday night. And literally by Tuesday, I had been offered the job. And I just want you to think about that for a minute. Like I, I literally applied for the job on Thursday night and had the job by Tuesday. So that's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's like a less than a week job application turnaround, which is the fastest that has ever happened for me. I mean, it was, it's like a dream job. I was like reading the job description and I just remember looking at it and being like, I want this job. This job is my job and just being very intentional. Um, And I got it and I was ecstatic. And, you know, like my first couple weeks there and even like my first month in, and even now I'm like just over a month into the new job, I'm thinking like everything's going so well what's what's wrong like everything's going so well what is about to go wrong and I've had a lot of guilt and anxiety recently just about how I don't feel stressed out at work how I'm able to have my own solitude to get my projects done and work on the things that I care about and work with really amazing people who value me and also have great work ethic um I know people who are listening or or watching are probably thinking like, you know, you've worked with people that don't want to do their work and they pass it off to whoever the young new hire is that's going to pick up the brunt of the workload. Um, But no, my team is like honestly amazing. I can 100% speak to that, that they do what they need to do to get it done and super supportive. Um, But going back to the book, I just realized I had reached my upper limit of happiness. This guilt that I was feeling for being able to rest and enjoy my work was something that I manifested without knowing that it was outside my upper limit of happiness. And so now I'm literally sitting here struggling, battling all these demons that are coming up for me, all these lies in my head that tell me that I don't deserve to have a job that I enjoy. I don't deserve to be doing work that is fulfilling, that gives me energy, that allows me to be creative and work internationally and be internationally minded. Um, and, and those are the ways that your upper limit, being unconscious of it, can sabotage you. Because as the book talks about, it's like you form these mindsets around this upper limit of happiness that are constructed to keep you where you are currently at in your life. And I realized that I got to that place. And so I'm not quite out of it, but it's like, you know, becoming aware of it is the first step. 
Um, I'm just checking all my devices here. So we're we're 15 minutes in. Like I said, I want this to be timely so that you can just enjoy your morning. But I think we've got some time to read a little bit more. And I hope you guys are just enjoying this time to like sit back and relax and make it easy <laughs> so far. Okay, so let's go on to point number two. There is a likability. Oh, I love this one. There's a likability limit that people like to remain under. Everybody has a level of success that they perceive to be admirable and unthreatening to others. Most things people do are in an effort to earn love. Many desires, dreams, and ambitions are built out of a space of severe lack. It's for this reason that some of the most emotionally dense people are also the most successful. They use their desire for acceptance, love, wholeness as fuel for better and for worse. The point is, once people surpass the point at which they think people will judge and ridicule them for their success, as opposed to praise them for it, they promptly cut themselves off, or at a minimum severely downplay or minimize it, so as to keep themselves in good standing with those from whom they desire approval. It's ultimately not that people value ego and material over love, but that they think those things will earn them love. Let's just unpack that for a moment. And I'll do it really quickly because I know the point of this is to read the book, not to hear my commentary. Actually, you know what? Scrap that. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Um, I think that this is something that I think about when I think about how I want to transition into just doing content creation for myself um, versus doing it within a nine to five for a company. I think a lot about how to put yourself out there is this like bold thing. And you think about why. And you think about it's the fact that like people are going to see what you're doing and people are going to be able to form opinions about you. And it's like, it's fine when you're doing things that keep you under the radar. Like, you know, if you're doing things that you have to do, like, obviously if you're like in college, so many people go to college. And so it's like, Oh, everyone's like, cool. I'm in college too. Like congrats. But it's like, once you're doing something that they're not doing, you give people the power to ridicule you and to look at you like, why are you doing that? I don't understand what you're doing doesn't make sense. And that's one of the hardest things I think when it comes to success is like realizing that you are going to be judged because you're doing something different than the masses. Let me stop there because I'm not, not going to get too much into it, but that's how I feel about that. How's my feel? I feel my eyelash flapping in the wind. Okay. Three. Most prefer the comfort of what they've known to the vulnerability of what they don't, even when what they don't is objectively much better. If we redefine happiness in terms of what human beings innately desire, comfort, inclusiveness, a sense of purpose, etc., we can then make the choice to seek comfort from things that are ultimately aligned with what we want to achieve. I feel like that's, you know, pretty self-explanatory there. Many people are afraid that being happy equals giving up on achieving more. Wait, guys, did I read this already? No. <laughs> did I? No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay, yeah. Many people are afraid that being happy equals giving up on achieving more. Happiness is, in an essential form, acceptance. It's arriving at the end goal, passing the finish line, letting the wave of accomplishment wash over you. Deciding to be that way every day can make it seem as though the race is already over. So we subconsciously associate happiness and acceptance with giving up. But the opposite is true. The path to a greater life is not suffering until you achieve something, but letting bits and pieces of joy and gratitude and meaning and purpose gradually build bit by bit. This I do want to speak to. Another law of attraction, manifestation, thing, ideology that I'm learning is that when you act as if you are able to draw what it is you're manifesting to you. So say you want to be a millionaire. If you act as if you're a millionaire, you think in your head, like, what am I going to feel like when I'm making like a million plus dollars a year? What am I going to dress like? What kind of things am I going to do? What kind of company am I going to keep? How many, how am I going to spend my time when I wake up in the morning? What are my thoughts going to be when I wake up in the morning? Zoom. Alrighty, here we are. Um, 
I vaguely remember the point we left off on, but I was basically talking about how just, you know, kind of like the book is saying by existing in your peace and your gratitude and joy, you're creating meaning and purpose for your life and gradually building it bit by bit. So it's like happiness isn't, you know, this cliche. Happiness isn't this destination. It's like where you're at in your journey. It's the way that you're able to find bits and pieces of the meaning of life as you get to where it is you want to go. Um, but we're about at that time in the podcast. I know it's been it's about been about 21 minutes and my camera is about to die. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in to the first episode. I feel like definitely didn't get to talk about as much from this book in particular as I wanted to. So I'm for sure going to be making more videos where we just read and talk about this book. Um, but yeah, if you feel, if you feel called, um, smash that like button and definitely, um, subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope that these videos encourage you on your own path, your own life journey, your own learning, educational, spiritual journey. And for the podcast listeners, I feel like I have to turn and address. For the podcast listeners, um, thank you so much for listening to the first episode of Readology, and I will talk to you guys next week. This is Kate. No, I have my outro for my old channel. I always say this is Kate Melina over and out, but I'm just going to say bye, guys. <laughs>